Hi, this is KM. Here's the last video on methyl intoxication in the biochemistry and public health series. We are here to discuss the toxic effects of methyl contaminations with some legal matters and take home assignment or in class discussion. From our previous discussion, we can see that metal ions could be essential to health but toxic when accumulated at high levels. These essential metals are required for normal metabolism and biological function. They are tightly regulated by transporters and binding proteins. Non essential metals are toxic as they replace the essential metals, causing harmful effects by blocking the normal physiological function of the essential elements. Chelation therapy with EDTA, DPAN, and other dithiols are useful to remove the toxic or excessive metals. Food safety is always our major concern as the toxic effects or damages could hardly be recovered. Legal control or regulation in Hong Kong could be found from the link at the bottom of the slide. Remember the golden rule of toxicology is that the doses make the poisons. We need to set some limits of metal concentrations in food and drinks to safeguard our health. This table summarizes the metal concentrations permitted by laws in specified food from the Public Health and Municipal Ordinance Cap 132 Food Alteration Metallic Contamination Regulation. For example, antimony and chromium are set as 1 ppm in all food types, arsenic 1.4 ppm for seafood and 0 0.14 ppm for liquids. Cadmium legal level is set as 2 ppm for seafood, 0 0.1 ppm for cereals and vegetables, 0 0.2 ppm for meat. Lead is 6 ppm in solid food, 1 ppm for liquid. Mercury all set as 0 0.5 ppm. This was set decades ago. In a pragmatic way, as we set the levels higher, we may not have qualified foods. The Center of Food Safety, Hong Kong SAR government, reported local mercury in fish and food safety. You can find the report online. From the study, they identified some imported fish with very high mercury levels, but in general, most samples were found to be lower, 100 or 200 ppm level. The limit of mercury is at a 0 0.5 ppm or 500 ppb. Therefore, most samples were below the limit of 0 0.5 ppm in China. The mercury level is set at 0 0.2 ppm or 200 ppb. The question being asked is, should we lower the limit to 0 0.2 ppm? In other words, make the safety limit more stringent. We are not alone. And the whole world is also monitoring the food contents of metals, mainly mercury. We all need to do a risk-benefit analysis between mercury contamination in seafood and the benefits of getting nutrients from the seafoods with omega-3 fatty acids in particular. In the U.S., a large-scale study over a decade further confirmed that tuna, swordfish, macro shark, or contain mean mercury level above the limit of 0 0.5 ppm, while other fish including groupers, different tuners are close to the limit of 0 0.5 ppm. Of course, salmon has enough good nutrients that we work to take a risk. But how much is too much? In 2003, World Health Organization revised the maximum weekly intake of mercury, a total mercury including methyl mercury, to 1.6 microgram per kilogram body weight in pregnant women for developing fetus and 3.3 microgram per kilogram body weight for adults. 
Assuming that 70% of methane mercury, uh, of mercury contained in fish is methane mercury, and the average total mercury in salmon is 0 0.4 ppm, and swordfish is 1.8 ppm, could you calculate and make recommendation to people as described below? Mrs. Lam, the body weight is 60 kg, is pregnant. Estimate the maximum amount of salmon or swordfish she can take without exceeding the weekly toric level, according to the WHO 2003 guideline. Please show and explain your calculations. Question 2. Mr. Lam, body weight of 80 kg, is a salmon lover and he eats 300 grams of salmon per week regularly. How many grams of swordfish can he take in addition to the salmon he eats weekly? Also show your and explain your calculation. Chinese, especially pregnant women, like to consume fish for protein intakes among other nutrition reasons. What are your advice to pregnant women to protect the fetus from mercury risk? Finally, local regulation of mercury is 0 0.5 ppm as maximum permitted concentration allowed in all food. Do you think this regulation is stringent, relaxed, or just about right? Explain how we should set such maximum permitted concentration of chemical contaminants. I hope you have enjoyed and learned some basic information on metal intoxication from these videos. Doing the case study here would also help you in finding how to avoid overconsumption of seafood or fish for the risk of mercury contaminations. Goodbye. Thank you.